Good morning. How is everybody? <laughs> Short and simple. Well, I always look at this verse. You all know this. I don't know if somebody doesn't know this. I don't know how you became a Christian. I think you have a guess. It's in the book of John. Yes. Yes. Yay. <laughs> yes. John 3.16. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I'm, when I was younger, I was very romantic and I always look at life as, it's a fairy tale. It's a love story. I love to watch movies. Who doesn't want to see movies, romantic movies? And in between those movies, there are fighting, they separate, and then depending on the ending, what happens? Some gets together, some has some sad ending wherein they parted ways, saying that love is, if you really love a person, you have to give it up. So, so many things are bombarding our world right now about love. See? There's even that famous Romeo and Juliet, wherein uh, when, when Romeo found that Juliet uh, 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 took that poison and then he also killed himself. So those kinds of tragedies, right? And people seem to enjoy it. I enjoy it. When I was during those, I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. But with so many commotions, and then all of a sudden they come together, I feel sad when the couple parted ways. But praise be to God. There's one love story that is over and above all of those. You know why? Because there was never a story that he parted with us. And that is the story of Jesus Christ. The story of how God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for us. Even though when he died, people thought that he's gone. But no, he made it permanent. He rose again. He died. It has to happen. Why? Because he's bearing his sins. Our sins. He's bearing our sins. So that he will be able to redeem us. And on the third day, he rose again. And that is a true love story that's going, never going to end. It will continue and it's going to go on forever and ever. And how did that happen? That's the very substance why we are here right now. We are to remember the sacrifice of love for us. And it is his atoning death plus the covenant. He died that day, no uh, 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 suffering, a sinless man, sinless God. He's man and God all together, all rolled into one. Because he loves us so much, he wanted to redeem us. Unlike the love story that we see daily or, or, or what we see in the movies, when they fight, they, they part, and they come together. Ah, that's not the kind of love that Jesus has showed us. No matter how much rejection he had experienced, he's still there. No matter how much suffering he experienced, he still went on. That is what unconditional love is. Amen? And the Lord wants us to know what that kind of love is. And every Sunday, we are to remember it. The atoning death. He died so that we will be redeemed. Meaning to say, we are all guilty. Right? We know that. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So no matter how much, sorry to say this, in other religions, they, they, they pay somebody to pray and then, there's no way that we can be in heaven. There is no way. But it's only through 
Jesus Christ, that's the substance of his atoning death. He took the sins, suffered so that we can be saved. And all we have to do is to say yes to him. Amen? Amen. Even though he did that, but you didn't say yes to him. No. no, no, that's not how it works. You have to say yes first. It's like uh, in the Philippines, we call it ligawan, and then we court the woman, and then no matter what, if the woman doesn't say yes, there's nothing. It's the same thing with our relationship with Christ. We have to say yes. And I know very well that we all said yes to him. That's why we are here. And we are to remember that atoning death. Amen? Amen? And this is another, I call this the bonus, but this is not just an ordinary bonus. The covenant, the covenant is this. Is this. When we accept him, he promised his people that he will remember our sins no more. Amen? Amen? I always remember that sermon. It's still very vivid in our mind. Dr. Slamas, if this is sin, God puts it on the ground steps on it. And that's not enough. He throws it into the deepest part of the ocean and then steps on it. That's how he will remember our sins no more. We are made new by the blood of Christ. Amen? Amen. So, let us prepare our hearts right now before we do this. You know what would prevent us from communing with God? We call this communion, right? We call this uh, the Lord's table. And what is going to prevent us? It's called sin. So right now, we have to come to the Lord's table in a judged manner. Meaning to say, let us not wait for God to judge us, but we have to judge ourselves. We are to look into our heart how much we failed Him. Every time we fail God, we are sinning. So how, there are people who say, no, 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 I didn't, no, no. If you just look carefully into the details, if you worry, you failed him. Why? Because you did not trust him. So you sin. Right? If, if you have thoughts that's against the word, his word, we sin. Very common. When we wake up in the morning, we fail to thank Him for the life that He has given us and pray and look at His Word. We failed Him. We sinned. In our daily relationship with our wife, with our children, we were not able to show the, that love to our loved ones, the Christ in us. We failed Him. We failed Him. We sinned. So do not rationalize. That's a problem with man right now. I'm guilty. I rationalize a lot of times. Oh, I did this for the good of... No, no, no. There's no such thing as rationalizing a sin. A sin is a sin. God looks at it. That's how it is. It's a sin. So let us close our eyes right now. And look into our hearts. Look for that sin, whether it be just being hot-tempered. You fail to pray. You fail to trust God. You fail to praise Him. Let us ask for forgiveness. Let us confess our sins directly to Him. And as He promised, He doesn't remember your sin as long as we confess it. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you again for this beautiful morning. We praise you and we thank you for your great love and mercy, your atoning death, and your covenant with us. What more can we ask for? You did everything for us, Lord God, because you love us, not because we love you. In fact, we rejected you, but still, you showed us your great love and mercy for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. So right now, Heavenly Father, we ask for your forgiveness for all the sins that we have committed. Lord God, you know our heart. We can never hide anything from you. We can always see our thoughts and our hearts, no matter how secret it is. 
So Heavenly Father, we pray that you forgive us, that you free us from, from those, those thoughts, the attacks of the enemy, whatever it is, Lord God. We're sorry. Please forgive us. And Heavenly Father, we pray that as we come to the Lord's table, that our hearts are prepared, that we will always be reminded, not just here in the sanctuary, but everywhere we go, every moment of our life, we will be reminded of your great sacrifice on the cross, your atoning death and your covenant. We pray all of these in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And for everybody who would want to partake of the Lord's table, please come up, take the elements, go back to your seat, because we'll be doing this together.